Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm coming at you with another set of paid requests, this time from Lennox Mate. Um, this time he wanted me to talk about all of the mechanic films, not only the original with Charles Bronson, but he also wanted me to talk about the remake with Jason Statham and the sequel to the remake with Jason Statham as well. Um, I actually like all three movies, and um, of course, anytime I get to talk about Charles Bronson, I'm okay with that. Same with Jason Statham. I'm sure most of you know that I'm a sucker for Jason Statham, so yeah. But thank you, uh, Lennox Mate, for sending in the paid requests. And we're going to start off again with the original 1972 Charles Bronson movie, uh, which I do really like this movie. I've always really enjoyed this one. I think it's one of the, I mean, most of, honestly, most of Charles Bronson's stuff, at least in my opinion, is pretty underrated. But I've always enjoyed this one. And I absolutely love this artwork. This is the original poster. And uh, they chose to use it for the Scorpion releasing. Uh, Blu-ray that I have here. If you can still find this, uh, I do recommend picking this up. I know with uh, Scorpion stuff, they kind of go out of print very quickly, and they only do a limited number of them, so you got to catch them when they're out there. But um, I do recommend this, and I do really enjoy this one. And we're going to talk all about it today. But before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this. You may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon, a comic book, video game, music, random thoughts and rants and streams and commentaries and anything in between. That's what the paid request is there for. So again, if you're interested, go ahead. Send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. And for those that have sent him in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. And you want to see me try some different things. It also motivates me to keep make, keep wanting to make videos. I missed a word there. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy. Like they used to say at Blockbuster, you guys get more of the type of videos you want to see and I keep making them. So there we go. But the mechanic, let me take a little swig here, sorry. It is not piss, it's green tea. But the mechanic. <clears throat> this is the second of six movies that Charles Bronson and Michael Winner did. Of course they did the first three Death Wish movies. Like I said, this was their second film. After this, they did The Stone Killer, which I know on uh, one of the more recent live streams, um, one of you guys brought up Stone Killer, and I was like, yeah, I like that one, and I do. I do like The Stone Killer. Um, yeah, I have that on Blu-ray over there. And then uh, the first movie that they did was Chato's Land, which I also have that over there as well. I think I have all of yeah, I have all six of the movies that they did. But this their I can't talk. But this is their second one. Outside of the Death Wish movies, I would say that this is my favorite that they did together. Now, again, Michael Winter was a good director. I enjoyed his movies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um particularly the Charles Bronson movies, but he was a disgusting piece of shit human being in real life. Fuck that dude. I'm glad he's dead. I have no problem saying that. But I did enjoy his films. And I don't know if it's a hair. Sorry. <laughs> Freaking out over nothing. Um, Like I said, I did enjoy his films. And outside of the Death Wish movies, I do like this one the most. And I would say out of the outside of the, again, Outside of Death Wish, I would say that this is their best movie that they did together. And it's one of the few where Charles Bronson played, you know, a darker type of character. Because in this movie, he plays a hitman. 
and he didn't really get to play that type of character. He was either always your vigilante, like Death Wish, or he was a cop, or he was a soldier. You know, this is one of the few movies where he got to play off the cuff a little bit, which I'm okay with. Mr. Majestic, which came out a couple years after this. Well, I mean, he was a Vietnam veteran in that movie, so he was a former soldier. So that's kind of still your typical Bronson stuff. But this is one of the few times where he got to play something a little bit different. Or if you look at, like, The Magnificent Seven, he got to play a cowboy. So, yeah. And I think that's another reason why I like this movie quite a bit. Because he, again, got to play a little bit of a darker character. You know, a little bit more edgy when, you know, this came out in 72. And this is when those type of movies were really starting to come out. The 70s, you know, I always praise the 70s films and, and talk about the 70s films because I think it's one of the most important decades in film. Movies really changed in the 70s. There was a explosion of, you know, your urban type of movies. Um... You know, movies started to get a lot more darker in the 70s. I'm not saying that movies before weren't, but in the 70s, there was a lot of really dark movies that came out. Death Wish, the original Death Wish could definitely fall into that category. But the 70s, film really evolved, I think, in a lot of ways. And in terms of content, it did as well. But like I said, I, I really like this because... Charles Bronson is a darker character. You know, he didn't really get to do that much. Especially, you know, don't get me wrong, the 80s is my favorite decade for Charles Bronson because he did all his canon films. He did The Evil That Men Do. Uh, he did movies like Death Hunt, which kind of went under the radar. But, um, you know, when he got to do something like this, it was a little bit different. I do like it. Now, it's not non-stop action like Death Wish 3 or Death Wish 4, but there, when there is action, there's some good stuff, particularly the ending. The finale of the film is, is pretty cool, in my opinion, and we'll get more into that momentarily here. But let me get into the story. I'm almost, you know, eight minutes into this, but again, one of the, like I said, I keep saying it, I know. One of the big reasons why I like it is because Charles Bronson got to do something different. And maybe that's why he did the film. I don't know. Apparently, he... I just now found this out. Apparently, he didn't really like working on this. He didn't like his co-star, Jan Michael Vincent. So there you go. But we'll get to that momentarily. So the story is Charles Bronson is a mechanic. Now, in the criminal world, in the underworld, a mechanic is slang for an assassin or a hitman who's really good at what they do. So Charles Bronson is the title character. He is the mechanic. And he is just living this very lonely life where all he does is kill people. Um, there's one scene where he visits a prostitute who was played, of course, by his wife at the time, Jill Ireland, and they kind of have this, he pays her to give him, like, this phony relationship. I mean, it does, I, I get why they had it in the movie, but in all honesty, you could have took that scene out of the movie. It wasn't really necessary to the story. I will say that. Again, no movie is perfect, and this movie is not perfect, and I'll get more into that in a second here. And he starts to have these panic attacks and these headaches and everything. And then he is tasked with killing a friend of his. So he does the job. And then he starts to take the guy's son, who was played by uh, Jan Michael Vincent, who at the time, Jan Michael Vincent was going to be the next big thing, but it didn't happen. And he takes him under his wing and starts teaching him how to become a a mechanic, how to become a killer, and they go on a mission, they get set up, they get out of it, and then there's a twist at the end. Now, I'm not going to give the twist away for people that haven't seen the movie before. I don't want to ruin it, but there is a twist at the end of the movie, and I do like the twist. 
But that's the story <clears throat> in a nutshell. Now, it's not the most original idea in the world, but I like the execution of it. The direction, again, Michael Winner, in case I haven't made it abundantly clear whether I was talking about Death Wish a while ago or this or in the future here, but fuck Michael Winner. But the editing, because he actually edited this movie, he edited a lot of his movies, but he didn't get the credit for it. Uh, he used a pseudonym, um, which was Arnold Crust, but he actually edited a lot of his movies. But the filming with a lot of the quick cuts, but it's quick cuts done in a good way, unlike now. And the tight shots and, and the angles and everything. It is a very, you know, I think appetizing visual movie, in my opinion. Now, as he went on, he kind of got away from that. The first Death Wish has some of that. But not as much as, as this movie here. And then by the time you got to like Death Wish 2 and 3, you didn't have that anymore. Because I think film changed. Again, in the, 80, in, the F, in the 80s, film definitely changed. Which is not a bad thing. It was actually a really good thing. But the filming is, is very impressive in this movie. I really enjoy the, the way that he shot the film and the way that he edited the movie. It, it's very stylish. It definitely has that 70s style to it. And it works for the movie. Again, quick cutting now is is just lazy and stupid, and I hate it because every movie does it. But back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, there was a reason why they did it, and they didn't overdo it like they do now. So, again, it is very nice to look at. It, it's definitely a 70s-looking film, and they don't make movies like that anymore, and they never will. Like I said at the you know the beginning of the video the 70s was probably one of the most important decades in film and the way that movies were shot back then it will never happen anymore it, it, it just people don't want to film that way for whatever reason they don't know how to film that way and you know you look at a movie i mean look at the dirty harry movies look at the first three dirty harry films um look at a lot of the Charles Bronson movies. Look at a lot of 70s, you know, urban movies. Look at the Warriors. I mean, movies like that will never be filmed that way again. And I miss it because it was very unique for the 70s. And again, you're, you're never going to have that anymore. So appreciate, you know, that's the beauty part about these movies getting re-released on Blu-ray and everything is now you can fully appreciate it. In high definition and everything. So there you go. But visually it is a very appetizing film. I really like the look of the film. You know again. It's it's straight up 1970s filmmaking. And I love it. Because there are so many movies from the 70s that I love. And they just don't do it that way anymore. And it makes me sad. But it also makes me appreciate these films even more. Charles Bronson does fine. Again, this is a chance for him to do something a little bit different. Like I said, the scene with Jill Ireland, you didn't need in the movie. You did not. Now, he he always wanted her in a movie because that was his wife, and I get it. But, you know, it is cool that they did so many movies. I think they did like 12 movies together, you know, when they were married. Um, and that's cool. I mean, that's unique. But <clears throat> I don't think she needed to be in every single movie that he did. And don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of her work, and I am definitely a fan of Charles Bronson. But, you know, the scene, the one scene that she's in this movie, you could have cut out of the movie. It wouldn't have ruined the flow. It wouldn't have ruined the movie at all. It's just kind of a throwaway scene. And I get why they did it. It just showed you how lonely he was. And, you know, kind of the lengths that he went to, to kind of feel something. I get why it's there. I get it. He said, okay, well, my wife needs to be in this movie or I'm not going to do the movie. I get that. But it didn't need to be there. Now, Death Wish 2, I think she's great in that because it made more sense. Assassination, I like her in that movie. It made more sense to have that type of movie with them. But just a throwaway scene here just because. I'm not really a fan of it. I'm going to be honest. 
Jan Michael Vincent does fine. Now, like I said, he was at the time, at this time, and in, throughout the 70s and even into the early 80s, Jan Michael Vincent was going to be the next big thing. He was going to be the guy, and it didn't happen. Um, I think it was his behavior. You know, I know he had issues, you know, with drugs and alcohol, and that severely affected his career, especially later on. But, you know, he was going to be, I don't know about the next Charles Bronson, but he was going to be the next superstar in Hollywood. But it just, it didn't get there. And I think him and Bronson have good chemistry, which is weird because I just found out prior to recording this video that Charles Bronson did not like working with him. Originally, it was going to be Richard Dreyfus, and Charles Bronson said no because he didn't like Richard Dreyfus for whatever reason. And then they got Jan Michael Vincent, and even then, Bronson still didn't like him. Apparently, he sneezed too much, and Bronson, Char, a lot of people don't know, Charles Bronson was a major germophobia, or germaphobe, excuse me. You, same thing, right? Uh, tomato, tomato. But he was a huge germaphobe. He hated germs. He hated touching things. He hated shaking hands with people. It's just how he was. But apparently, Jan Michael Vincent sneezes a lot. Now, I read that they were going to actually do another movie together, and then Bronson pulled out of the movie in the last minute. And that movie was Damnation Alley, which Jan Michael Vincent starred in. It was about a, like a super truck that he had, and it was like Mad Max with a truck. Um, apparently, the movie didn't really do that well. I've never seen it. But that was supposed to be Charles Bronson in that film with Jan Michael Vincent, but Charles Bronson backed out at the last minute and it became Jan Michael Vincent. But I didn't know that he didn't like working with him, but he does fine. The rest of the cast is minimal. I mean, Keenan Wynn is in the film. He plays Bronson's buddy, Jan Michael Vincent's dad. You've seen uh, you've seen this guy before. He worked with Clint Eastwood a couple of times. Um, he's been gone for a long time. Uh, actually, everyone in this movie is dead. All the major players in this movie are all dead, which sucks. Um, but it is what it is. It's part of life. But yeah, um, he's only in the movie for a couple of scenes, and then his character gets killed. But, you know, I kind of like that. It's a very simplistic, minimal movie. It is notable that the first 16 minutes, there's not really any dialogue. Now, there's a little bit of chatter when Bronson goes into the hotel. Well, the flea bag hotel. But the first 16 minutes, there's no dialogue in the film. Now, this was doing it way before all these other films tried to do it and be cool. But it is effective. It is well done. I love the beginning when he goes in and he's eyeing up his target and he kind of sets up the room where. The gas, he sets it up to where the, the the gas will go on, and then he puts the stuff in the guy's tea, so he passes out, and then he puts the gunpowder in there, and then it blows up. Or not the gunpowder, but the plastic explosive. I do like that. It's a very unique intro to a film. And again, the 70s was full of that. I know I keep saying it, but I guess because I'm getting older... I tend to appreciate things more. I guess that's what happens when you get older. You appreciate things more. But, you know, I go back and look at these movies from the 70s, and I'm just like, why can't they do movies like that? Like, why is that such a bad thing? Like, I, you know, you guys know, I always talk about, you know, why can't they make an 80s action film with today's technology? Not really technology. Well, yeah, technology, not CG, but you know, filmmaking technology and and that kind of thing. You know, why can't they do that? Why can't they make a a uh, a vampire film with all practical effects for twenty five million dollars and people will actually go watch it? You know, I watch a lot of these movies from the seventies and I'm just like, you know, why can't they make a movie like that? Like recently, um, about a month or so ago, because it's already March. Um, I watched Godfather 1 and 2 again. It, it had been a while since I had seen them. But I'm just looking at this film, both of these films, and I'm like, why don't they make movies like this anymore? I don't get it. Like, why is it so hard to do that? So many filmmakers 
you know, say that they're fans of these movies and they try to rip them off. Instead of ripping them off, why don't you just make your own movie in that way? But I guess it's too much to ask for. Um, but I do really like the intro to the film. All the martial arts sequences were filmed in one day. The The instructor is actually James Kahn's instructor. He founded, um, I think it's called Gojusuke Karate, I think. I mean, I got it here. Might as, might as well, you know, pull it up on my phone. But the guy's name is uh, Takayuki Kabota. Or K yeah, K Kabota. Yeah. Um, yeah, he founded um, Gosuku Ru Karate. That's his version. Uh, but the dude's a badass. He's actually still teaching, he's still doing his thing. And James Kahn is. Um, one of his students, but that was all filmed in one day, and they did 65 different camera setups to get the scene when him and Bronson are training, and then the other scene. That was all done in one day. Um, the the motorcycle chase I really like. I think it's I think it held a record for a while for like the fastest drop or something. I think the movie actually held that record. Um, the stuff in Italy, which they actually filmed in Italy, I really like the car chase, especially and um, the, you know, Bronson shotgunning people, you know, that was all really cool. You know, I, again, I really enjoy this film. I, for, when I was getting more into Charles Bronson, when I was in probably, you know, middle school, you know, late middle school, early high school, I think my mom got this for me for Christmas or something, because I remember there was one Christmas where I got this, and I think Mr. Majestic, because they were, like, super cheap on DVD, and I used to watch these a lot, along with the Death Wish movies, and then some of the canon, the other canon stuff, and I still really like this movie. Again, um, this is one of the better Bronson movies from the 70s. I think it's one of the more underrated ones, and I'm glad that you know, we got a, a new Blu-ray. Because there was a Twilight Time Blu-ray, but I, I said, fuck that. But all the features from that are on here, and then there's more. So it doesn't matter. But I do really like the artwork on here. Again, this was one of the posters. And then the flip artwork. is actually one of the other posters, and then uh, some of the VHS releases use that as well. And I do not have this on VHS. I definitely need to get some more uh, Bronson on uh, on VHS, because I don't have that much. And uh, Jerry Fielding did the music. Speaking of Clint Eastwood, um, uh, Jerry Fielding did the music for a bunch of Clint Eastwood movies back in the day, but I do really like the score in this movie as well. But at the end of the day, I really enjoy this film. I'm, uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It is slow in between the action scenes, um, but I just am a huge Bronson fan. I'm a sucker for his movies, so of course, you know, I'm going to be a little bit biased there. It's just how I am. Uh, but I do really enjoy this film. If you've never seen it, I do recommend it. Check it out. You may like it. You may not. But it is what it is. And, um, yeah, that's about it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of the original Mechanic. And next up, we'll be getting into the Jason Statham stuff with the remake, which I do like. I do like the remake, but I will say that Mechanic Resurrection, the sequel, is a much better film. And we'll get into all that uh, in the next video here. So thank you guys once again for watching. Lennox, mate, thank you for sending in the pay request, and we will talk soon. See ya.